Hello folks, now um, if, <laughs> if you watched the last one um, I need to make the same apology um, about the Zoom conversation uh, that my son is still having. So I'm doing these videos back to back. So um, again, <laughs> if you can hear any noise in the background, I do apologise. That's just two people trying to work from home and uh, a hyperactive eight-year-old in the same house for you. Okay, Coastal Processes, the last instalment. Dun, dun, dun. Deposition. Deposition, pronounce it however you want to, I'm not bothered. Page 13 of your modules. Okay, so deposition, you have maybe had some weathering which weakened your rock. It then got eroded by various marine processes, i.e. processes to do with the sea. It then got transported along the coast. At some point, that piece of sediment is going to be put back down again. And that, ladies and gents, is deposition. So you don't, there's not a lot to understand with deposition. It's just stuff that's being put down. There are um, two important things, really, for us to know. Deposition happens because water slows down. So where water gets its energy for carrying stuff is from its speed. So the faster that water is travelling, the more sediment it is capable of carrying. As that water slows down, it will deposit what it is carrying. And if uh, you look, well, those of you who are geologists, you will know all about this. But even for non-geologists, this is not particularly tricky, so don't worry. You can tell if sediment has been transported by water or wind because the deposits are what's called sorted. Now that means they um, fine upwards, or to put that in a different way, the biggest stuff is at the bottom and the smallest stuff is at the top. Because what water will do is it will get rid of its heaviest stuff first and then it will deposit the lighter stuff last. So that's just one thing to know. On page 13 in your space for notes, why does this happen? So if you just write something like, because the water slows down and it deposits the heaviest sediment first and the smallest sediment last, which means the deposits are sorted, that would be absolutely fine for your notes. As ever, if you're a visual learner, a quick sketch of the diagram on the left might be helpful. Um, the picture on the right, I don't think I've zoomed in, in enough for you to really see um, that that is a sorted deposit. So my apologies on that one. Um, it did look quite good, but at that size, it's quite hard to see. You'll have to trust me that that's a picture of the diagram on the left, sort of. Now, this is the other important thing. Yes, you could attempt a diagram um, if you want to. Um, flocculation, brilliant word, I absolutely love it. Um, if you could use it in Scrabble, you would <laughs> get loads of points. Okay, water, carrying stuff in suspension. We talked about that in the last video. You can tell if water's carrying stuff in suspension because it won't be transparent. Uh, it will look muddy. Okay, so you've got water on the left. Flocculation is a process that happens at estuaries. It happens in other places as well, but for us, it happens at estuaries. An estuary is where a river meets the sea. Okay, so rivers are fresh water, seawater is salty. When the river comes to the sea and it's carrying all of that, um, sorry, sediment in solution, Dear, suspended sediment, my brain's not working. When the river comes down to the coastline and it's carrying loads of suspended sediment, it meets the seawater. And what happens is, the only thing that was keeping that suspended sediment in the water is an electrostatic charge. When the fresh water meets the salt water, the electrostatic charge is cancelled out which means that your suspended sediment clumps together. You can kind of see that in the picture in the middle. So the little suspended pieces of sediment start sticking together. And because they stick together, they get heavier. And as they get heavier, they sink to the bottom. And at the end of the process of flocculation, you are left with clear water and a clump of sediment at the bottom, 
which is, of course, ladies and gents, a form of deposition. And you can kind of see it here. So we have, uh, this is a river in Argentina, um, and you can see it is completely full of sediment, loads and loads of suspended sediment. But here, the seawater is, is quite clear. So what happens here, the fresh water meets the seawater, the electrostatic charge is cancelled out, and you get that really weird process of flocculation happening. So all of that suspended sediment will now be on the seabed here, and hey presto, the water ends up clear. So flocculation is a really, really important form of deposition that you get on coastlines. Um, you only get it really in estuaries, uh, but it's a very important process for all sorts of things that we talk about later in the module. Okay, so you'll be delighted to know, ladies and gents, that coastal processes are over and what that means wait for it da, 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 you can attempt a question ha ha okay so i need to go into my onedrive folder and i need to remember what on earth i've called it factors affecting erosion there we go okay so on page 14 of your module, you have a 15 mark question. I've given you quite a lot of help on page 14 with it, um, but this is kind of um, what I want you to do. This is the, the last thing uh, that I was hoping to do before um, Easter really. Um, and. I'll talk to you about what I want you to do over um, Easter in a little bit. But page 14, factors affecting the rate of erosion on a coastline. Right, let's do a bit of revision then, ladies and gents. So, waves. The first thing that we need to say about waves is um, the size of the waves give you an indication of how much power they've got. Big waves, more energy. That's going to give you more erosion. Okay, so big waves, more energy, more erosion. You could show off in a paragraph about um, marine energy quite a lot of understanding about things like depth of water. You could mention tides. You could talk here about fetch and all sorts of things. So that should be quite a good chunky paragraph of your answer where you're explaining that waves can be different sizes depending on a whole load of different factors. And that, of course, is going to affect the amount of erosion you get. Okay. Secondly, geology, how hard the rocks are. Um, I've given you some notes on page 14 about this. Um, so you've actually got some rates of erosion and it's pretty simple. Hard rocks are gonna take ages to erode and soft rocks are gonna erode quite quickly. So that is going to be a factor affecting the rate of erosion. Remember, if you can keep linking back to the question, you're gonna stay relevant and it's going to make your answer better. Number three, coastal protection. So you might recognise uh, this seawall, you might have walked along it, um, this is in Devon. If you've got a whacking great big seawall like this, the land behind it clearly is protected, it's not going to erode, is it? That's the whole point of that seawall. Here, this is the poor old Holden S coastline that some of you may have studied, no protection at all. Um, and if you look at the figures on page 14, you'll know that this coastline is eroding at roughly two metres a year. Um, because it's not protected in any way, which is a factor affecting the rate of erosion. I'll stop doing that now because you've got the idea and it'll annoy you. Now, this is a new bit of information. Dredging. Dredging is taking sediment off the seabed, so you dredge it up, literally, to use it elsewhere. And this is your first little mini case study, ladies and gents. This is the case study of Hall Sands, which is technically still a village in South Devon, but was a much bigger, more important village. Now, I'm not going to show you that video clip. 
Um, and I'm going to talk to you about case studies in your final video of uh, this half term. No, well, this term actually, won't it be? But um, this is your first mini case study. You need to just put together what happened to Hall Sands. It used to be a thriving fishing village with, look, this lovely beach. Um, really thriving fishing village. Lots of people live there. Uh, not so much of a village anymore. And it's all because of something called dredging, which is where people remove sediment from the seabed, as I said. Now, we now understand that coasts are systems. We've talked about that in previous videos. The problem with a system is if you change one part of the system, it's going to have knock-on effects for the rest of that system. By taking away the seabed in this bay, the sea then took the beach away to replace the seabed, okay, because that's how a system works. If you don't have a beach, then you don't have a natural coastal defence. The beauty of a beach is if you've got this beach here and a storm comes in, the storm hits the beach and everything behind that beach usually is quite well protected. If you don't have a beach anymore, the storm is going to obviously affect the, the land behind that beach. So by dredging the seabed, the sea fixed that problem by taking the beach away and hey presto, Hall Sands pretty much disappeared in a storm. Do some Googling, have a watch of that video. There are quite a few videos out there on the internet actually, but that is your first little case study and it should have a little mention. Presence of a beach we've mentioned, and then you could uh, have a brief mention of the weather, the climate, for the reasons that are mentioned on that screen. Okay, so um, it's a 15 marker. So what we're looking for here is at least a side of writing, right, to get across what you need to get across. Because it's worth 15 marks, we also need uh, to think about an introduction, a main body, a conclusion and some name drops or case studies. So what we do with um, an introduction is we find something to define or give the background to. So the question is at the bottom of page 14. What Think about what could I define, what could I give the background to? It only needs to be a sentence or two and then move on. In the main body, you're gonna need to do a paragraph on each factor that affects the rate of erosion. Some paragraphs are naturally going to be much bigger than others. For example, you could say loads of stuff about waves, but you might not have much to say about the presence of the beach, just because there isn't much to say. But the other thing we want in the main body is we want to back up the points that you make wherever possible with some name drops or some case studies. So I would like a mention of Hall Sands, definitely. Okay, and there's also a fantastic article that starts on page 15 of your module um, about the impact of the 2014 storms, which you might just about remember. The 2014 storms were the ones where the railway line um, washed away at Dawlish, it's where the Somerset levels flooded. It was our last kind of really severe winter. And because we had storm, 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 we had some massive waves, loads and loads of coastal energy. Um, and so you could kind of name drop the 2014 storms within your section on waves and marine energy. But that article is just worth a read generally. It's just really, really interesting um, because the 2014 storms changed the coastline of the Southwest on a semi-permanent basis. They were just, yeah, crazy, crazy storms. Now that was going to be, and that is mostly your, um, your Easter task, okay? I'm gonna do a separate video about what I'd like you to do um, over Easter, and it shouldn't be a lot of work, all right? It really honestly shouldn't, but I'm officially now asking you to tackle the 15 mark question on page 14. In my final video, um, of this term, I'll talk to you about deadlines and how to get that to me and all of that sort of stuff. Okay, um, right. Sorry <laughs> about um, some technical issues today. Um, email me with any questions. One more video before Friday.
Thanks, ladies and gents. Bye.